Okay, this is an interesting one. In this recording, I will be covering what usually is the first thing discussed in other organic chemistry review classes or lectures. We're going to talk about the functional groups. The reason why many people start with this is because this is the basis for classifying our organic compounds. But I believe that it's better for us to have started with the basics that I've previously recorded before going here so that hopefully you would understand the functional groups better. To give you a brief understanding or background of what functional groups are, I have here two compounds that you may have already encountered before, even, you know, even if you have not yet encountered organic chemistry. I have here acetic acid, and it's sometimes even written in the periodic tables or what, uh, visual aids. So sometimes it's written like this, sometimes like this. I believe that this is more often than not the preferred structure because there's a reason for that. This way of writing acetic acid has the COOH set of atoms, and this is actually a functional group. So basically, a functional group is a set of atoms. So, for example, for COOH, the name of this functional group is the carboxyl group, and compounds that contain the carboxyl group, this one, are called carboxylic acids. I will mention that also later. And for example, ethyl alcohol, everyone knows what this is. Maybe not the formula, but this is it. Sometimes it's written like this, CH3CH2OH, and this is the preferred if you're going to talk about organic chemistry because this contains the OH functional group. We call this the hydroxyl since it contains oxygen and hydrogen. And those that contain the hydroxyl group are called alcohols. So actually, for example, that's a misconception. Alcohol does not only refer to the alcohol we have in drinks. We have like hundreds or even thousands of different alcohols. All they need to do or to have is this OH functional group. And the reason why functional groups are very important is that they give basically the functionality of the compound. Um, when you say functionality, more or, less, more or less the physical, the chemical properties, and even the reactivity. And hopefully you have realized that chemistry really talks about properties and reactivities of matter in general. So it's safe to say that, for example, if I have compounds containing COOH, those compounds would have some common characteristics or properties or reactivity, the same with alcohols. That is why. We want to discuss them. So I will be covering the common ones, which I believe are the only ones mentioned in organic chemistry subjects, especially for, for degrees that only have one semester of organic chemistry. So the first and the most fundamental, but not necessarily the easiest, I want to say, are the hydrocarbons. They are called like that because the functional groups are nothing more than just carbon-carbon bonds, and other than carbons, they have hydrogens and nothing more. No oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, halogens, only C and H. Now, if you have only a single carbon like this one, which by the way, this is the smallest organic compound possible. We have methane, okay, or probably the simplest. This contains nothing more than just single bonds between carbon and hydrogen. Now, if we have at least two carbons, then you may now see a carbon-carbon single bond. Now, if I have more than that, as long as all the carbons are bonded singly to one another, then you call those compounds as alkanes. Now, if in those set of carbon atoms, you have at least just even just, just, just one double bond, then you call a compound an alkene. So when I say at least one, you can have two, three, four double bonds and you will call it an alkene. If you have a triple bond, at least one, then you have an alkyne, okay? Sometimes you have a combination of those. Like for example, I, I have a triple bond here and a double bond here. And remember, there are supposed to be hydrogens there, but I will not draw that anymore. In this case, we have a mixed breed of some sort. We call this an enine because it has a double bond N and then a triple bond I. But, you know, we don't really talk much about enines in basic organic chemistry. Now, uh, whenever you see this compound, which of course we call as benzene, probably, arguably the most popular organic compound for students, these are called as arenes or aromatic compounds. 
And uh, actually, a little spoiler, the word aromatic is a very technical one. So you have to wait later on how we classify if a cor uh, compounds, if they are aromatic or not. Okay, but once you see benzene, you can just assume they are aromatic. Now, I have the next set of functional groups. We have what we call, or what I call, substituted alkanes. Well, what I call because many books don't actually use this terminology. And uh, I call them like that because, for example, methane is an alkane. The proof is, well, in the name, it has a suffix in, alkane. Now, if I remove this hydrogen and then... I substitute it with something like X, like a halogen, then I have Rx. In organic chemistry, R is like X in math, meaning it could be anything as long as it's organic. Meaning, as long as this has a carbon, doesn't matter if it has one, two, three, I don't know, probably even 50 carbons, that's R. So if I have a R, and then, so in this case, R is CH3, and then X, then we have Rx. If I replace X with OH, then I have ROH. If I replace OH with NH2, then I have RNH2. So all you need to do is to substitute a hydrogen. So in the case of RX, X is a halogen, as we symbolize it in general chemistry. We call these compounds as alkyl halides. So uh, that could also mean that you know this is a halogen, so we can call an R an alkyl group. So if I have an alkyl group attached with NH2, which we call this is the amino group, those which contain the amino group are called amines. So this is the functional group. This is the class, okay? Now, I've already mentioned this. So if we have a hydroxyl, you call that compound an alcohol. Now, if you have an oxygen in between two carbons or two R groups, you call that an ether. Now, here at the right side, I have what I call the sulfur. This is sulfur. Sulfur analogs. When you say analogs, they are like modified versions of something. For example, I say that SH is like a sulfur analog of OH. So, so in this case, we call this a thiol. Note that whenever you have the prefix thi, like thio or thia, that means the presence of sulfur. Actually, you can see that in organic chemistry, but I won't give examples anymore. I hope you can remember some ions with sulfur and then you have thio in their name. Okay, like, I'll probably give one example, like, we call this cyanate, right? But when I remove this, this, and we have a charge there. If I remove this and replace this with S, then we call this thiocyanate. So, uh, something that you should have already seen before. Now, the same thing with here. If we have ROR as an ether, if we have RSR, then we call this a thio ether. Okay. Now, I have, uh, this is the last set of functional groups. So, first, C double bond O is called the carbonyl group. And notice I have two blank bonds here. Just trying to remind you guys that carbon is supposed to have four bonds each. So if I have two bonds dedicated for the carbonyl group, there are two other bonds. So in that case, if I have my carbonyl in between two R groups, it's sandwiched between two carbons, we call that type of compound a ketone. Now, if not, if we have one of the things sandwiching the carbonyl group as hydrogen, then we have what we call an aldehyde. And uh, I think I could label them. These two are oftentimes called by textbooks as carbonyl compounds because the carbonyl group is what's special in them. Now, that is, in comparison to this, uh, functional group at the bottom, although it has the carbonyl group, we have the extra OH group. And actually, this is the COOH group I already showed you a while ago. And... Hopefully, you remember that we call this the carboxyl group. Now, hopefully, you will understand that this is like a combination of OH. Remember, we call OH as hydroxyl. This is where we get the oxyl. And then the carbonyl. So that's why we have the word carboxyl. It's a combination of OH and CO. And those that contain COOH are called carboxylic acids, just like the acetic acid that we have a while ago. And the... Things that I will draw right here, which I, I have not yet really drawn right now, are called the carboxylic acid derivatives. We call them like that because they are somehow derived and are related to carboxylic acids. 
Okay. So first, if I have COOR, we call these compounds as esters. Okay. Now, if I have CONH2, actually, it doesn't matter if you have no hydrogen as long as you have C double bond ON, then that's an amine. Then, if I have RCOX, this is a halogen, remember? So, we have what we call as an acyl halide. Okay. And if I have here something like this, which I will try to uh, uh, elaborate in a bit, we have an anhydride. Now, you notice that I have this word, acyl, right here. And... A while ago, I have something called alkyl halide. So if this is the halide, then this is the alkyl part. So if this is the halide portion, then acyl must be everything right here. And if you notice, that is actually what's common in all of the derivatives, including our very own carboxylic acid. And you can think of the word acyl as like acid, wherein you replace the suffix to yl. And that's because the acyl group is what stays constant in all derivatives. And uh, therefore, you can think of anhydride, by the way, as two acyl groups connected by an oxygen. I don't know if that would help, but uh, I think of it that way. Except for one derivative, most have acyl groups. This is the only one commonly mentioned that doesn't have an acyl group. We call these as nitriles. Or sometimes we call them as cyano compounds simply because CN is the cyano group. The same way, like, or related to the fact that cyanide is CN negative. Okay? So these are the basic functional groups. And I really mean it when I say basic. Like, if you mix things up here, then you're really up for danger. So I have to tell you, be very uh, careful. And tendency of beginners, like, in their first month of studying organic, they still switch some things, which is understandable, but you have to make sure that you're not confused for long. For example, amines containing NH2 are oftentimes exchanged with amides, which also contain NH2, although they have the C double bond O. Or probably I have ether, ROR, confused with esters. Well, they actually have ROR, except esters have a C double bond O. So I won't be like, mentioning all things which look alike because it really depends on your perspective. Some things may not look alike to me, but they may look like, alike to you, so make sure that things are clear. In fact, I think I would record something in the future that will practice us on functional groups. But for now, this is the introduction. Quite long, but again, remember that this is intended for beginners, and I, I hope this clears things out before we proceed to the next discussions.